right. Short mouth. All right. You got me until 12. Same. What's going on, Paul? Are we good? Are we We're live? We're live. Let me put my phone up. Well, I want to start out first thing. We are here at Vitola Fine Cigars here in downtown right. Mountain Brook. If you ever want to find a cigar and you're here in the Birmingham area, you got to check them out. Our awesome hosts. Or their uh, website, VitolaFineCigars.com. That's right. Get them shipped. Get them shipped. So today, we want to touch base on finances, real estate, investing, you know, and that, that yeah. even goes along the lines of buying a house. Uh, and also, we really want to reach out to our, our young men out there and uh, just really speak into their lives. Maybe they can glean from our experience. Yeah, so where do we begin? Well, I'd say, you know, let's start with, like, finances. Get your finances in order. Because if you don't do that, you know, you really shouldn't be investing. You got to get your house in order. Or you can go out and do something else. Right. So, so that includes everything, right? All of it. When we say house, we don't just mean your actual house. It means taking care of your own stuff right. in your life before you go out and help other people or do something else. Right. Right. Well, if you don't have a budget, you need to learn how to set a budget. Now, I don't know about you, Paul. It's been quite hard myself the last year and a half setting a budget. Because I don't, I don't get paid weekly or bi-weekly. You know, I get paid every other week or so or something like that. There's no set time. It's when I close a house, I get a lump sum of money. And I have a breakdown of how I divide that money and where it goes. But I don't have like, the envelope system where, you know, 100 bucks goes to this, 200 to that, 300 for groceries. I think everyone does it differently. Right. If you listen to Alex Ramosi, he said that when he was starting off, when he was still broke as hell, right. he would make it a challenge. Like he would use every month as a challenge of how frugally he could live. Right. He said, all right, I can break it down. I can live on this much. I can uh, rent this place. I can eat by this amount. Right. And he said, I want to see what I can do each month. If I can beat it, spend less. So, so I started doing that. It's, it's been it's been tough, but it's good. That's a good point. Get a plan you stick to and make it a game. Challenge yourself. Yeah. Uh, what what do they say? Like, diets aren't real. It's lifestyle. If you don't do it, it doesn't matter. So do what you're right. going to stick to. Right. You can plan all day, but you just got to start doing it. Right. Don't think about it. Dude. So once you think about all the different things you have to do, you're going to be like, ah, oh, too many things. I can't, I don't know where to start. Right. But then start with the first step and keep going. Don't think about the end. Just keep thinking about the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. So once you have your finances more or less understood, you know where your money's going yeah. and you're taking care of yourself, uh, now we want to talk about investing. And okay, now we need to make that money, make money for you. And something that I wish I would have done sooner, and for young single males, I'd say, you can probably do this if you're still, uh, if you're dating or married or whatever, yeah. as long as your spouse is committed, is house hacking. House hacking. And y'all just did something recently. No, no, you didn't house hack because it's just you investment for y'all. Right. right. But we thought about it. It was an option it. on getting, getting into a deal. All right, so what's house hacking? House hacking is when you live in a property that you intend to rent out. Now, house hacking can be done primarily with duplexes, triplexes, and fourplexes. And the, the hack part of this is that a bank will give you a loan because it is your primary residence. They'll give you a personal residential loan, which means you only have to put 3.5% down. An ordinary conventional loan, they would require 20% down. If it was investment. Right. Right. Which is a much bigger number for people just getting started out. Right. And honestly, I don't even think it's worth it. 20%? I don't think, honestly, There's I don't know ways. why you would unless you just had plenty of cash and it wasn't doing anything for you. 
there's ways to get in that you don't need 20 percent uh -huh. but for young guys getting started out house hacking is a great great way um, so what about if you want to buy a house and have some of your buddies run out a room oh yeah but that's a good point too but see there's it's a different dynamic with the house because you cannot count their income like you would if it was a duplex right because it's a separate it's not a separate unit like a duplex or a triplex just pay your bills with it you know right so you got to qualify for the house and then have them pay whatever the seven eight hundred bucks a month right for their room and bathroom and then you're basically paying nothing for it but you can't use it to qualify for the loan right so as you could with a duplex or a triplex that goes back to having your money in order you've got to have that budget and show that income and make sure that you can qualify for that loan but it's still a great option oh yeah and either way it's great for those who want to get into investing in real estate like smoother with less tenants you buy that first house you're saying run out to your buddies all you can do is leave that house after that first year and use another fha loan to go buy a second house yeah and rent out the first one. yeah and that's how people they also do the burst strategy where they buy it then they fix it up a little bit you know while you're living there nice set of paint finish and trim make it look pretty so i keep seeing burr brr what does that what does that stand for so everyone knows that stands for buy renovate refinance rent repeat there you go <laughs> there you go uh, so yeah, in those steps, you buy it, then you clean it up when you're living there, you refinance it. So that means they're gonna give you money back on that new value, because you put that value in by renovating it a little bit. Now this is appraised value. Appraised value. Not estimated value. Yeah, appraised. So if you bought it and it appraised for 100, put 10,000 into it, now it's worth 150. Right. You get 80% of that 150. Right which you use to pay off that old loan, and then the remainder to go buy the next one. And repeat. Rinse and repeat. Rent, rent that out, repeat, repeat. So, when I see this, everyone's like, ooh. So it's like, I only have to buy one house, then I don't have to ever do anything ever again. But <laughs> what are the problems with that? Like, what, what do you face when it comes, it's not like, it's not as easy as it sounds. Right, oh yeah, you're gonna be a landlord. You gotta be taking care of that property, fixing leaks or anything else that breaks, so. I would recommend if you're going to get into it, you need to plan to get into it for the long haul. Get a couple going so that they're each paying you a certain amount every month and you can utilize rents from over there to fix something in a different property. Yeah. The more you have, probably the less risky it gets. Okay. What about renovating the property? Right. Like in the same example, you buy it for 100000 you put ten thousand into it, but what if it doesn't appraise for one fifty? What if it only appraises for one ten? Then you might need to sit on it for a little while, just until you put that equity into it. So don't forget, every month when you're paying that mortgage off, you're putting equity in the home. And then when you finally built up 10, 20 percent of the equity in that house, then you refinance it. You're good to go. Gotcha. You know. Uh, so don't do it on time. Do it on whenever the value is right. Right. So it's not like someone's hearing this and they're like, okay, I'm gonna buy a $100,000 duplex and then in a month, it's gonna be worth 150. Right. So it's like, it's not always like that. And you gotta run your expenses. What's it gonna cost you to own and operate this place? Like right now, my fourplex is costing about 500 a month in expenses, give or take. And that's taxes, insurance, uh landscaping garbage i have a power bill for some floodlights to make sure the property is just lit at night you know keep scoundrels away uh but all in all about 500 a month it's not too bad for four no no it's a beautiful compound you know big concrete slab a lot of parking very clean i think we've only got like two trees <laughs> hmm. so not not a lot to take care of just got to mow that lawn that's great you don't have to worry about anything falling on the house. Yeah, yeah. 
So I would recommend getting into it as soon as possible and looking into ways to invest in real estate without using 20% down. So for us, what we did is some form of seller financing. Uh, I gave him a $10,000 down payment and he's holding my mortgage for two years. Okay. I'm paying him a thousand a month towards the principal of the mortgage and 500 a month for interest just to his pocket. With so you the, pay 1500 a month. Right. But with the condition that I have to refinance and pay him the full amount in two years. So the agreed upon amount is now. It's not going to be determined later. Right, right. We were already agreed on it. And I didn't even get an appraisal, which is very risky. But I, this gutsy. I did this to appease the seller. He gave me my terms, so I'm going to take the risk to get this deal. He let me in with a huge deal, and yeah. I'm very thankful he's giving me a, this opportunity. And honestly, like it is a textbook way that so many people have got it started into real estate. And he's that guy. I would say look for that guy, your guy, to believe in you and that's awesome. Give you that shot. How what um what made him want to sell to you? Like let's sell our our people. What are the things to look for in a motivated seller like that? Because not not all people are gonna want to do creative financing. Right. So he didn't necessarily either, but there's key things that allowed him to do seller financing first thing is he owned the property he did not have a mortgage on it at all outright right yeah so if they had a mortgage they some people can but most will not want to do this sort of deal because they still got to make that payment does that make sense but because he did it it's fine then. you know it just takes the stress of being a landlord off his shoulders and then he gets to cash out and retire He's also already retired, so. Right, well that's better. It's not relying on it. So, let's say you hit the lottery tomorrow. Right. And you had whatever it was that y'all agreed upon. Can you pay it off earlier or does he want that two years of? No, I could pay it off earlier. You could? That's good. Yeah, it's just giving me the two years. Hopefully interest rates go down or I figure out a way to do something creative with another property. By using that cash flow. All right, so this all sounds great, and for the most part it is, but what are the uh, potential downfalls that you need to look out for? Um, making sure you ran your numbers right. You know, right. If, if you didn't run your numbers beforehand, and all of a sudden you find out, hey, I can't pay that mortgage, uh-oh, you know, you've got a negative cash flow, and that's that is not what you want. That is the opposite of investing. That's losing money. That's losing money. <laughs> uh, some other risks are, you know, looking at properties in bad locations or bad areas yep. where the location is impacting the value and also the rent value or the quality of the tenants. Uh -huh. So do your research on where you're investing. Uh, and of course, things breaking like let's say you invested in an old property that has not been maintained you better expect some capex capital expenditures and repairs that need to be made so if someone's looking to do their first house hack or investment something that you you just did should they be looking for a turnkey type of investment where they don't have to really put in anything into the property or look for something to fix up or what walk me through it? I think it would depend on you, your comfort level, your experience with construction and your willingness to do sweat equity and your capital, how much money you have saved up. If you have that experience in making repairs yourself, you're okay with doing repairs yourself and you've got the money to make some repairs, I'd say you can get a better deal if you're willing to go that route, but if you don't have a lot of money, you don't have a lot of experience like that, I would highly recommend get started right. Do something that is turnkey 
and will leave you with a good experience so you continue and build your wealth mm -hmm. versus destroy you in your first try. Yeah, it's, it's better to start small and build. Right. Than to try and make it big and you don't know what you're doing. Man, I was swinging just for the fences when I got started. I, I tried buying a $12 million property in Mobile. I remember you telling me about that. It was a deal. It was a huge, huge deal. But it, it fell through just because the seller, at first they wanted to sell it for a certain amount, but then they were like, hey, I want to sell it for more. And I was just like, man, I lost it because uh, the seller got a little too greedy. That happens. Did you follow what happened? Did he end up selling it? He did end up selling it. For what he wanted? For what he wanted. Okay, well, he wasn't. Sucks. He wasn't wrong because he was getting a lot of offers. That's why he bumped the price. Ah. But if you already had a contract or an agreement, then he should have just stuck with it. I was trying to get it under contract for what he originally listed it for. But there was New York bankers and big hedge fund money coming in, and I couldn't play with that. That was, that was out of my league. Yeah. I think that the key is to find something that's not too small, but not too big. Um, definitely word of advice is I would recommend getting a duplex or fourplex because if you lose one renter, you still have one or three so that you're not dead in the water. If it's a single family house, you lose your one renter, you need to move quick and get a new renter in there and get that money going. But if, if you have to start with single family, oh my gosh, I've met so many wealthy, wealthy people who all they do is single family homes. Yeah, and also if you just want a house and then maybe want to, when you want to move in a few years, you can keep it. Right. Even if you sell a mortgage, if you have leases that are paying uh, more than 25% of what the mortgage is, then it's like you don't have any debt you keep going on as if you're buying a new house right and that's a very practical way that many people can get started in real estate very little money down yeah i think it's smarter that way plus the 20 percent that you have to put down you could be putting that somewhere else right or living on it right you have to live on it so those are our recommendations all through them. Do something. Take some action. Yeah. Do something. Do it. The Do longer something. you wait, the the less time value is on your side. I'd say, wouldn't you agree? Action now, whether you don't know what you're doing or you know what you're doing, little action steps now are better than the perfect plan later. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I've learned that the hard way. I wanted it to be a perfect plan, and then just take off. I'm just like, you just got to take action and then edit it along the way. There's no perfect plan. I'm reading uh, Alex Hormozzi's book now. Yeah. Have you read it? I have not. Oh, man. It's, I'm only like it's one chapter in. It's already fantastic. What's the name of the book? $100 million offers I'm by Alex Hormozzi. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to get it on Audible. That's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. Yeah? Yeah. He says if you do it with Audible and read it at the same time, it sticks. helps retain. Yeah, sticks more. That might just be a sales tactic for him to get another, yeah, double another money. sales. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it sounds like it makes sense. It, it does. I know? believe it. But the, uh, the book's been great. I'd recommend it. Check it out. All right, y'all. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Peace.